Our lifestyle, our security, our safety, depends on a delicate and unstable economy. We've created a system so complicated that we no longer understand how to control it. Oil, power, shipping, transport. We live in a complex world. And the more complex it gets, the more fragile it becomes. The system is built on a global supply chain that gets things where they're needed, just in time. We've created a house of cards. Remove just one, and everything falls apart. Ubisoft seem to be doing a thing now of pulling a surprise or two out of their conferences, and this year is no exception. Tom Clancy's The Division came out of nowhere, smashed the place apart. We're joined by Peter and Frederick to discuss the game. Guys, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now, I, firstly, let's, let's talk concepts. It's sort of far flung. Well, now, far flung future, near future, infected. Who are you fighting in the game? What's the concept? So, uh, the game takes place about three weeks after uh, a man made virus has been unleashed upon New York City. So, as you see, uh, all the services, uh, all the official authorities, like closing down one after the other. And basically, you run out of food, you run out of water. So, what do you do, right? Um, so, basically, you see a lot of new factions arising here, fighting for survival, fighting to uh, basically get their hands on any resources that's left. Uh, so, what you do is you play uh, an agent of the division, which is one of the last remaining uh, working, functional government organizations that's still out there, and they're trained and specialized to deal with this kind of disaster scenarios when you know the chain of command and and uh, the the law structure has broke down basically so are these is, these guys like almost like just frontiersmen doing uh the fight for justice as it were i mean what's the role i mean is there a larger scale story arc in this or is it just you're trying to work your way through the cities and survive so the game is about restoring the society and also bringing hope back to the city and it's also about curing the virus okay. right. virus infected suggests possibly enemy types and whatnot, but who are you actually fighting in the game? So that would be the factions you meet, that fa the factions that take advantage of the situation, the mid-crisis situation. Uh, a lot of the fighting would be versus those kind of factions. Okay. And we saw with the, with the combat system, we saw during the demo at the presentation, it's all about strategy, it's all about working together as a team, basically. I mean, how have you guys sort of filtered that, filtered the idea of that sort of combat system in the division? So, well, it's, uh, at its core, it's a role-playing game. So it's a lot about your, yourself, your progression, your character, all the customization you do with the skills, the talents, the weapons. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know, it's a Tom Clancy game, so the tactical combat part of it, it's also at its core, and it's very important uh, to have that aspect uh, in a Clancy game. Uh, so obviously, there will be hundreds of weapons to choose from, uh, it's very much cover based, so uh, depending on your, how you move tactically and what covers you choose and what weapons you choose, uh, you basically uh, need to, to do that in a smart way to take on different challenges, different factions who have different tech levels, different movement patterns and so on. Now, it's sort of like a massive open world, but I mean, how have you guys went about designing this? Because this, this looks stunning. I mean, how have you guys went about designing the city with the engine? So, so it's, a, it's a huge engine. When, I, when we talked to the team and said how big game we want to do, they just laughed at us because it's so big. Uh, so we're making a huge world, uh, but it, for us it's important that you can play solo. You can play the game solo. You can also group up with friends or find people online to play with. And you can also seamlessly transition into PvP areas. Right, with, with, with the actual story arc and with the combat, I mean, how is this? Are you just wandering the world, finding engagements, finding stuff to interact with? Or is there more? How, how does it work? So this is an open world game. So there is no linear story. Uh, there is no linear path you have to take. Yeah. You, can, you can go on side quest. You, not quest. Sorry, we don't do quests. <laughs> Hobbits do quests. Um, so so it's it's an open world game. Can you sort of detail a little bit about the weaponry and certainly the skill sets that your character or characters will have in the game? So it's a Tom Clancy game and that means that it, it has to be grounded in reality. So, so the skills you're using, they're very much grounded in reality. It's things that happen, you can do right now. And it's also, parts of it might be technology that we will see in, in, in uh, like secret technology that we'll see in the coming years. 
Well, how long have you guys actually been working on this? I mean, uh, the, the build we saw at the uh, presentation, how long has been in development? So the actual game we have been working on for about a year, but the technology for the game we have worked on for many, many years. Now, with the, uh, again, with the story, with the character, you, it's your, your, you're embodying this role. So how do you get that sort of emotional connection between the player and the world that they're in? So for this game, we have developed a brand new engine. We really want to push those emotions to the player. We want you to be able to immerse in the game. So we have developed a new next-gen engine called Snowdrop. We're pushing graphics, we're pushing uh, lighting, we're pushing destruction, procedural destruction. We're pushing AI. We want to have a complex AI where, where you see the world adapt to the player. And also online, we want to do everything seamless. We want you to be able to find uh, players to play with that are not only your friends but also players you might want to play with. So we're trying to find compatible players for you. So uh, And also the companion gaming. Uh, you can play the game on iPad and Android with our companion gaming solution and if you do that you can play together with your friends that play on the consoles. Yeah, I'll touch on tablet for a second but just what you said there to go back you said about the destruction. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so for our destruction, not in, it's not only predefined. So what we see in many games is the predefined destruction. In our game, we have some procedural destruction. That means that we actually change how the objects are composed in real time, and, and that that changes physics and that changes lighting as well. So you actually change the world while you play. That's right. So destruction is a gameplay element of the game. Yes, absolutely. It changes lighting and it changes physics. Okay, tablet. What, why have you guys introduced this into the game? So, uh, I mean, we think it's a, a great way of people, you know, it's, our game is a, it's a multiplayer game from ground up. So this is another way of us of connecting, you know, more people to the experience. So you necessarily don't have to be, uh, you know, uh, skilled with a controller or even own your own console. You can actually play uh, with your friends in the same world. Uh, from a tablet. So I think that's the from the gamer experience perspective, that's what we wanted to do. But at the same time, we don't want it to be like gimmicky, you know, it's just not, it's not just something that we want to talk about in interviews, but actually be a meaningful experience, both for the tablet player and for the console player. So you have a real-time interaction uh, between what you do on the tablet and what's going on in the console world. So you, you actually control a drone on the tablet, that uh, renders in 3D in the console, and you can both have a supportive role and an offensive role, you know, buffing and debuffing your friends in the console uh, game, or you can even go on the uh, offensive and like uh, save up uh, skill points to uh, send off a missile on the enemies or just uh, mark targets for them or whatever. So it's, it's a real meaningful support uh, or offensive ability that adds to the whole uh, dynamic group play that, that's important for us. Is, is there a limit on how many people on tablet can be joining with a squad on console? Yeah, so uh, in, in a group it's one to four people on the console and then you can add one more uh, from the tablet. So it's four plus one. Now, with, with, from what we saw from the conferences at E3, obviously you know, there's that big thing about a connected world, they're really pushing that for the next gen consoles. Did you guys start making the division with that in mind, I mean, was the division made because you guys knew that, that that's what they were pushing, or did the idea for division come first, and then you just factored this in because what you heard about next gen? So, so we started with the design. We started thinking, what game do we want to make? So this is a, a online open world game. Uh, so, so that's the core of the game. So we really try to push online and try to make sure people have a really good experience while they play the game. Um, where are you guys now in development? I mean, what have you guys got left to do? Oh, we have a lot, <laughs> a lot left to do. So we're looking at shipping the game next year. Yeah. So okay. the, plenty uh, of things to do. Well, what has your, what has the reaction been? What do you think the feedback's been? Because yeah, we had last year with Watch Dogs. This year, you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've been checking the Twitter and the Facebook and social feeds. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's you know, it's uh, frustrating to work on a thing for over a year, and you can't tell anyone. You know, I told my wife about it just uh, Friday before we went to E3, and she was, oh, that's what you've been doing. And uh, even worse with your friends that you haven't seen for a couple of months because you're, you know, you're crunching to get the E3 demo done. Uh, so it's such a relief, and we're so proud to be here to, you know, introduce our game and the work that we did uh, for the last year to the fans and, and to media. 
so it's a it's a relief and you know it's like almost your baby getting born you know it's so the the response we had so far from from you guys and from the fans on the net has been overwhelming i mean people are talking about the game as you know top three or the the big surprise or the the only truly next gen game so far and that's a huge compliment to us and the team back home guys listen thank you very much indeed for talking this very noisy booth appreciate it. best of luck with it thank you thank you so much our complex world is primed for breakdown. And once the chaos strikes, there won't be resources to save us all. The only question left is, what will it take to save what remains?